The Dean J Television Show. Hosted by Dean Robinson. And now, Dean Robinson. Dean Robinson, Summit City Multimedia Mastermind. Dean Robinson produces digital audio and video, news, music, and entertainment for his websites, Summit City Noise and Summit City Music. Dean Robinson produces the Dean J Television Show, featuring Dean J Newsbeat for Summit City Noise, Access Fort Wayne Television, and YouTube. People interested in experiencing a rational and sober account of slavery in the United States of America and the lasting effects of slavery on race relations in the United States may want to go see the movie called 12 Years a Slave. Film director Steve McQueen appeared on Comedy Central's The Colbert Report saying, 12 Years a Slave is a true story about an American hero. If you simply crave a silly, endless argument with race at the gooey center, Check out the latest production from the National Football League and the Miami Dolphins called Hayes and Racism, starring Richie Incognito and Jonathan Martin. Let's go to the Daily Gazette's coverage of the NFL pregame show's Week 10 Sound Bites, Fox NFL Sunday Richie Incognito interview. Miami Dolphins guard Richie Incognito spoke with Fox Sports reporter Jay Glazer, delivering his first extended interview since the Jonathan Martin Hayes and Racism saga broke. So, Jay Glazer reads Richie Incognito's controversial voicemail to Miami Dolphins teammate Jonathan Martin that set off this whole controversy. Hey, what's up, you half N word piece of blank? I saw you on Twitter. You've been training 10 weeks. Want to blank in your blank mouth? I'm going to slap your blank mouth. Going to slap your real mother across the face. Laughter. You're still a rookie. I'll kill you. That's this NFL, the National Fraternity League. When you go to Time Magazine, Jack Dickey has a story called Charles Barkley is still not a role model. And which Charles Barkley, the National Basketball Association great, gets to weigh in on this. So, Charles Barkley went on Inside the NBA on TNT and delivered a commentary about the use of the word nigger in locker rooms. Barkley says, I'm a black man. I use the N-word. I'm going to continue to use the N-word with my black friends, with my white friends. They are my friends. In the locker room and when I'm with my friends, we use racial slurs. The language we use sometimes is homophobic, sometimes racist or sexist. All this talk about concussions and sexism and racism in the National Football League makes radio personality Rush Limbaugh say that he would rather watch Homeland on Showtime than watch professional football. Terry Bradshaw doesn't have the liberty of not talking about this. He really brings the wisdom on Fox NFL Sunday when he says, As a white person, I don't want to talk about this. I don't know where my boundaries are. Charles Barkley, well, he's going to address the N-word boundaries for white people. As I tell my white friends, who I love like brothers, they've asked me, when is it appropriate to use this N-word? So Barkley lets you know, you use it around the wrong brother, the next thing you're going to hear is a clock upside your damn head. That's when it's inappropriate. <laughs> Coming right up. And they always do an extra special job. A pet Jets, pest control, Decatur, Indiana. Some of them even have their winter coats on yet. Hey, can somebody tell me, what's the point of all this Hoagland days? Oh, uh, we like the, the carnival well rides and stuff are fun, too. Well those those well rides that they got going it's on are pretty good time. Get it done, um, baby. It's all about the, the food. food. So, Joe, I heard that Hoagland days is the best party in Allen County. It is. <laughs> Now tell me, what are you doing out here today? Um, cooking some uh, Nine Mile Rotisserie Chicken. Um, cooking 350 chickens for a fundraiser they're doing out here at Hoagland Days. So Joe, what else is going on here at Hoagland Days? Well, they have a uh, volleyball tournament, which is very well attended. They have a demolition derby um, going on tonight. They, uh, they had a big parade 
today at 11 o'clock. They've got a, a, a big food area back here. They've got a midway uh, with all kinds of different rides. So there's all kinds of things for the family to do. Now there is a lot of activity out here, but people love to eat. So tell me how important it is to get that chicken done just right. Well, it's very important. Um, this is our first year doing it here and we want to come back. So we want, you know, every person that has Nine Miles Chicken to, uh, to want to know, you know, who made it and make sure that they want to have us back here next year. But you've got to understand, this whole notion of money, a medium of exchange, it's largely psychological. Money is an idea. It's going to be currency, these coins, and now the paper dollars, our Federal Reserve notes, the fiat currency. Well, those are going to be physical, tangible, but the fact that we pay those and accept those as a medium of exchange, it's just an idea. Our Federal Reserve note, based on an idea, psychological, we accept it because it's legal tender with the government telling you you have to accept it by threat of violence maybe, legal tender, but that is an idea. Legislation is an idea. The fact that silver and gold have all these values, much of it is just going to be an idea. Some of it's going to be industrial use. With silver, many industrial uses nowadays, We're going to be using that stuff in mirrors for medicinal purposes, for health purposes, in all these fabulous electronics that you love. In the military, they use silver in missiles. Got to have that stuff. Gold is going to have those uses in electronics, but not used as much. So gold is going to be seen more as money. Think about it. What do people use gold for? For jewelry, for coins, and then for very ornate statues and decor, and then for those bars that are then put in vaults just to stay there, a storage of wealth. It's an idea. Keep that in mind when you're doing any of your vesting or when you're putting any of your value in money and these monetary assets, money is just an idea. I'm Steve Merritt. I'm the owner of Noble Roman Steak Baked Pizza here in Fort Wayne. You could have just been Steve's Pizza. Why did you decide to become Noble Roman Steak and Bake? It's pretty hard to get all the systems in place and learn all the, all the tricks of the trade, if you will. And with a franchise, they provide all of that. They tell you what items to buy. You know, you need this many coolers. You need, you know, they help you lay out the store, help you find a, a location. You know, uh, they tell you how much cheese goes on a pizza, how much, how much sauce. You know, show you how to do all of that, so you don't have to try to figure all that out by yourself. Now, a lot of people believe. This economy is very trying right now, but here you are with a new endeavor. Can you explain to people how it is that you're able to launch into this new endeavor and why you think it's a good idea to do this now? Well, I've always loved the take and bake concept. I really like the Noble Woman's Pizza. It has, you know, it's great pizza and everybody remembers it from back in the day. And it's the same pizza. So when I heard that they were coming up with this concept, I went out to Indy to try all those pizzas and make sure they were the same as I remember them, including the deep dish Sicilian, and it was the same pizza. So it seemed like a good fit, because everybody remembers no Romans. Now, with Green Lantern, you've got to understand, the original Green Lantern was created in the 40s, and it's going to be draped in all this mysticism. But in the 1950s, DC Comics reimagined Green Lantern as basically a space cop. That's right. Now it's the Green Lantern Corps. It's going to be thousands of these aliens from across the universe. Well, they band together to create a universal police force. So Green Lantern, he's a cop. Fort Wayne, Indiana is home to more published authors than I ever knew. This is Dean Robinson reporting for Summit City Noise. The 2013 Author Fair, sponsored by the Bookmark Bookstore on North Anthony Boulevard, happened Saturday afternoon, November 9th, at the Allen County Public Library in downtown Fort Wayne. At least half a hundred writers with ties that bind to Fort Wayne occupied the main floor of Allen County's main library to promote their books and to meet the people who read them. I'm promoting my books, Served Cold, Tales of Revenge and Redemption, which is what I call semi-autobiographical revenge fantasy fiction, and also my erotic fiction, which is called Anything for Georgetown and Other Stories. A lot of writers out there 
So talk to me about the challenges of trying to stand out amongst all that. That's pretty much what it's about after you get done with the writing and the finished project is to getting the word out there and you have to be creative. So your book is Love and Loyalty. Tell me a little bit about it. My book is basically my own experiences. It's just about um, when I was younger, I had a boyfriend that was into the street life and I was right there with him for everything. So I just wrote about it and it's a real good book. I live here in Fort Wayne and have been collecting postcards for over 35 years and so we took um, 227 postcards out of the collection and used them in the book to illustrate Fort Wayne history from about 1900 to 1960. This guy's going to help you, Lanny, because you're a little shy. He's going to help you out. <laughs> now, Lanny, you have a vested interest here with all these authors because you run a bookstore. So tell me about why you're involved. I just, it's a community service thing. We've been working with the authors and um, bringing them in on Saturdays and, and doing some author signing. So it's, yeah, trying to have some question, more exposure. Where is your store? I'm in the North Anthony Shopping Center. You know where Zoner Stadium in Concordia High School is? Yeah, I'm right. on the same side of the street as Zoner Stadium. I'm just through that uh, strip mall. Um, it's it's always Anthony right Center. over there. Yep, North Anthony Center. This is the Dean J. Newsbeat. Dean Robinson serves as producer and host of the Summit City Noise Dean Cast audio podcast. When I was doing Summit City Noise originally, it was a lot more just reporting, actually calling people and just doing these reports. And finally, just a lot of people didn't like it. Because if you talk about the United Way of Allen County, or just the United Way, if you talk about it bad in Fort Wayne, oh, you'll have people coming out of the woodwork to just uh, dog you in the media, in government, in family. It was a trip. And so that's what I was doing. But then I'm going to find out the United Way. Well, it's United War Fund. The United War Fund from World War II. United War Fund. And so uh, it's a book called Design for Giving. It's going to just let you know these power players that just uh, pull together all these charitable organizations. But it's originally for this World War II effort. But then once World War II is over, well, these mugs realize, well, we still have this apparatus of giving and, or, and taking you know, these uh, United War Funds, well, let's just drop off the fund, you know, the war, and just call it the United Way. You know, United War Fund. You can look it up, people. And then, uh, you know, the Advertising Council, all these awesome ads to get you to stop smoking or eat egg whites, whatever. You know, the Ad Council. You see the billboards everywhere. You hear these radio ads and whatnot. That's from the Ad Council. Well, that's the War Advertising Council. War Advertising Council for war propaganda during World War II, the White House controlling all this propaganda. But once the war is over, well, what War Advertising Council? Just Advertising Council, the Ad Council. Dean Robinson serves as producer, editor, and director of the 2011 rock documentary, Nova Rex, Ain't Easy Being Cheesy. Yeah, rock and roll! Bands with balls. Let's put it that way. Hair sprayed, you know, big boots, party, party, drink all night, throw up, drink some more. Yeah, of course I'm famous, right? I go in the room, I'm looking for JP, and he's truly hanging naked in the closet with gravity boots. But why should I be the next Bon Jovi or something? The difference between us and a band saying like Def Leppard? Or it's just numbers, man. It was just numbers. We didn't have a thousand we, chicks after a gig. We only had 20. You know what I mean? Right. The music, the hair, the whole facade, everything that went along with it. Well, yes. Aquanet served two purposes. You could use it as a weapon, spray exactly. it with a fighter. Don't film my balls, <laughs> <laughs> look like girls. A lot of times the guys in the band look better than the girls that were trying to pick them up. I mean come on, I mean does Bon Jovi have to go to a restaurant? Is he gonna, are they gonna charge him to eat there? No. Did they charge us? No. I mean ours might have been Burger King, you know. And, and the whole thing with sex, that was already a done deal. That was part of it. 
who was telling me that my mom is gonna bone uh, Robert Redford, that was that. Grunge came in and it just took us out. It wasn't about grunge hitting, it was about Nirvana hitting. Ain't easy being cheesy, so uh, that's what Nova Rex comes up with to combat this grunge movement. Ain't easy being cheesy. Come and experience the performance that changed the world. Dean Robinson masters multimedia challenges every day for fun, money, and adventure. Contact Dean Robinson, multimedia producer for hire. Phone or text 260-338-6473. Email butchblack at mac.com.